Good morning, it's Wednesday morning. Welcome to Sabah's Way of Life. So today let me share what I am focusing on in the house. So I'm going to be going outside and showing you a few bits and pieces that I've been doing in the garden over the last couple of days. Um, I'll I'll actually talk about it now because it's quite windy outside and you probably won't be able to hear me. So first up, what I want to show you are two um, is a fruit that I have sown and it's a warm weather fruit. It's okra, bindi, ladyfingers, so many different names. Um, okra and ladyfingers are the two um, western names um, in our culture. In Urdu, Hindi, it's known as bindi. So I had two different types of seeds. One set of seeds I had bought from um, a middle a, a Doha uh, food festival, and those seeds are genetically modified. They're F1 hybrid. I bought them because my my mother loves bindi. She wanted me to grow them. She wasn't concerned about them being organic, and I thought, all right, I'll test them out. Then another set of seeds are, are simultaneously a friend of hers bought from India. I don't think they're organic, but I don't think they're as um, chemically treated as the ones from Doha. So again, I'm somebody who likes to cross-reference. I write everything down, as you know, and I'd written down when I'd sown them. And I'm just turning this around. They are on the windowsill. Now, if you look at the windowsill, I want you to notice I put them on a heat mat. These heat mats you can buy from anywhere. Um, I discovered this again doing my research and looking at somebody else's site in the UK who grows um, hot hot climate vegetables. And it's in a tray. I put compost in. I've uh, watered it and I've covered it with a polythene bag. And look, these ones, which are the ones from Doha, are already germinating. And I'm talking about less than a week. These ones here, which came from a friend of my mother's in India, have not. So you can see how chemically treated, well, I'm, I'm assuming from this, you can never be 100% sure, but from this, that chemically treated um, seeds will germinate faster because that is the whole point of it, to, to compromise on its purity so you get things quickly. Let's do it now. I want it now. Let's... let's um, harvest tons of them now so that we can feed all the people in the world and just forget about the majority of them who are starving. So you can see the difference there. I like to um, cross-reference all the time and check and see. And my, that's how my mind works. It's not just about growing plants. It's understanding the nature of the plant. Um, well, the other thing we're going to do outside is I'm going to take you to the side of the house where that side of the house faces south because my garden is north facing. So the back of the garden, the rear of the garden, if I turned around and face the house, it's facing south. So the sun will come down. That's where most of the things grow. So on the side of the house, see again, I'm always considering, thinking, understanding. Take the responsibility to understand these things yourself. It does sound really silly, doesn't it? But we've forgotten how to take responsibility for anything. We go on to, the, to a YouTube site to understand what shall I do, where should... Once you've got the basic information and the basic knowledge, the rest of it you can work out for yourself. Just use your brain, use your intellect. That's what we were given it for. Don't outsource your mind to another person, the government or anything. You take responsibility for your life. So that was a bit of me digressing there. But if you go to the, um, when I take you to the side of the house, you'll see that I've got two tyres and um, I've, I've got two other pots that I, I dragged from the rear of the garden, washed them down, brushed them down. Again, all exercise. I keep thinking I'm moving my body, I'm exercising. And I was out in the wind and the cold doing this. I think it was yesterday or the day before. It's exhilarating when you think of it as I'm getting exercise. So you're not having to go to the gym to get the exercise although I do go for my spin classes I love them but I'm getting much more in another way always think like that never think oh my god 
do I have to now wash this? Oh, can I have someone else to do that? Or I don't want to do that. Just think I'm exercising my body. I'm doing so much for myself. It's fantastic. And go and do it. Change your thinking. So what I did, I had some seed potatoes, which I bought um, a couple of weeks ago. And I think I shared it in one of these videos. You'd have to go back and find it. And I chitted them. Chitting means putting them up, leaving them on, on a windowsill so that the, the shoot, each potato has its little shoot or sometimes has two or three, um, starts to grow. And when you do that, before you plant these seed potatoes that you buy from um, the garden centre, it's better because they're disease free and more likely to, um, to grow, certainly when you're starting out and learning. When you chip them on the windowsill for a week or so, they grow a little bit bigger and it gives them a good head start. And I know it sounds like, you know, how much knowledge do I have? I don't. I really don't. It's just being out in the garden, getting onto, um, I mean, Google if you have to use it, but there are many. Mozilla Firefox is my favourite. Getting out onto your search engine and checking and then just doing it. It's it's just go out and do it. And the more you practice, then you'll get your own understanding. You'll do things differently. You'll make mistakes and you'll learn from those mistakes. So that I'm going to show you in a moment. The other thing today is biodynamically, it's a root day and it's also a descending moon. So the moon descends and then it ascends and then it descends and it ascends. It's a bit like, um, as it says in the Quran, um, a date, a, a, a date stick, a date twig. When you've used up the dates, it kind of does that. Oh, I could talk a bit more about that, but I won't. But that it in, in, in the Quran, it actually describes how the moon moves. Remember, this was like 1400 years ago, how the moon moves. And God compares it to um, a, a, a date, if I remember correctly, a date twig. And that's exactly what the moon does. So I'm digressing again, which is always important part of my videos so that you follow. It's like a story. So. It's a descending moon. When the moon descends, as I've mentioned in a previous video, as the moon descends, you know the moon has a, a huge impact on the waters of our being and the waters of the land. So a descending moon, the energy is being drawn down into the earth, into the soil. So today is a root day. A root day means um, growing um, plants like potatoes and carrots which are very favorable from a lunar perspective um, to do today or work with those crops and plants that are root based it's also a descending moon which means the energy is down into the earth so i'm aware of that and i'm going to be going out into the garden and i will show you some of these things and i'm going to be working with some of the plants in my borders which don't look like there's many um, well there aren't many but there are some things that come up in spring that I couldn't see before so rather than me digging it all over I wait and see what comes up and I've got two beautiful um, Welsh onion plants which I bought three or four years ago and the I, I use them if you look up Welsh onion you use them for the stalks the stalks are like a spring onion but they are 100% better tasting and these are perennials so they're They've been it, it's been in there for the last two years and I've even managed to um, break it, break up the clumps, the, the, the root, the bulb um, and then make two plants out of it. And it's delicious. So that's just kind of suddenly shot up. And then other fo other shrubs that are out in the garden, I'm just going to check on them and work with the soil. I'll also take you very quickly into the greenhouse and just show you how everything is just starting to germinate. And finally, if you remember the first root um, food crop that I sowed was, was garlic. And I think I shared it with you, I showed you the pots. I'm gonna show you now, I think we're two weeks later, maybe just a bit over that. And the green shoots are already coming out. They've not even been in the sun. I've kept them under the tree, under, under the tree at the back of the garden because we've had so much rain and I didn't want them, the roots to be soaked in the rain and damaged. 
So um, let me go out and show you that. I'm also cooking up a beautiful spinach and mutton curry. I did that this morning. And if you go to the shorts, I think they have shorts, I've just uploaded just a quick, I think it was a 10 second video of the ingredients that went in there. And you can look up how to cook a spinach curry, but that might help you. And then when I finish cooking it, I'll do a short video of how it, how it looks when it's finished. So always go to the shorts um, because that will then be a visual, a short visual video of what I'm talking about in these main daily videos. Okay, so let me go out now to show you the spuds, that's potatoes, for those who don't know the colloquial British term for potatoes, it's spuds. I'm going to turn this around. Right, not sure whether you can hear me, but it was very windy earlier. So I'm going to the side of the house, and this face is south, doesn't look like much at the moment. Two tyres here, I washed the, this is a terracotta pot, another broken plastic garden pot, and all I've done is I've filled it third full, all of them, with a mixture of my garden compost, um, potting compost that I bought, and my uh, rotted chicken manure. I'll show you that another time. Potatoes, let me turn. Potatoes need a lot of organic matter, and by organic matter I mean potatoes are a very selfish vegetable. I'll talk about the that side of it another time. So you can put them in a pile of manure and they will grow. They love it. They only think about themselves. Those of you who are smart will figure out what I'm saying here. So and, and yeah, so potatoes and red tomatoes are extremely selfish fruit and vegetable, root vegetable, and they think about themselves. And I'm going to read you an extract from Rudolf Steiner's work about them another time. Rem well, I'm going to say remind me, but I don't know how you'll remind me. I'll remember. So that's how I've done that. So let me turn this. Um, I have filled it a third full and then I put the potatoes in, into them. You just look up on Google how to do that on something and filled it up, watered it, and I've left it here. And see, it actually faces south. So I'm, this is a shared driveway and it faces south, which means that it's not taking up room in my garden and it's going to get a lot of sun when we see the sun. So now I'm going to take you to the, um, the garlic. Let's turn this around. These tulips are coming out, don't they look lovely? The hens. And look over here. This is lovely. Look over here. This is the garlic. I've put them on the side of the garden here. And um, these are the pots I showed you. Can you see the stalks coming up? I've covered it in straw to protect, just protect the soil from drying out and getting um, soaked or wet, although they're under the trees. When the sun comes out, this one doesn't seem to have anything coming out just yet. Don't know why, but um, these do. And over here is my Dalek, where all the chicken poop goes. So the chicken poop and the straw goes in here. And then after about a year, the following year, this is what I take out. Pure chicken poop decomposed with some carbon. Some, and it's great as a growing medium. This over here is my water butt, which I showed you the other day and I said it was my Dalek. It isn't. This is a Dalek because it looks like a Dalek. Um, those of you who've watched Doctor Who will know what that means. So this is my water butt and you can see over here, Ian, again, my old friend, when, when he built this um, small barn here, him and his brother built it for me, um, we got the guttering at the top here. See the guttering? And it goes all the way back. So when it rains, all the water comes through, comes down here and fill, this is filled up with water. I don't know if you can see. And then I use it to feed the chickens, also the plants. And of course, it doesn't just 
it doesn't stay like that. I have to get up on the ladder. I have to I have to empty out all the um, leaves that are coming down from the fir tree and the conifers. And again, that's exercise, getting up on the ladder, keeping my limbs moving, and also understanding the land, understanding the maintenance things that I have to do. I, I'm not suggesting all you women should do this. I really enjoy it. That's why I do it. It keeps me fit. What I am suggesting is that once upon a time when there were real women on the land, they did this. It wasn't a man's job. A man did other jobs too. But women did all this. And talking about that, when I was um, on Sunday with Peter showing me how to shoot, his wife was there. Met his wife. And what was she doing? She was out cutting the lawn, mowing the lawn. You'd think that's a man's job. She was out mowing the lawn. She was cleaning the windows, spring cleaning the windows from the outside. These are not jobs that you think are for a man. This is what mainstream has weaponized women to believe. These are your jobs, ladies. The men can do it and the men used to do much harder work. You know, they go out with the axes and chop wood. And even in some places, a friend of my brother's had told me that his grandmother used to go and chop wood. That's what they did. That's a real woman. Woman. Yeah, you're not there to look pretty and smile. Um, that might work for the weak man to be impressed by, but not a real man. Um, okay, now, greenhouse. Already you can see, look at that greenery coming up everywhere. I, I just keep this closed because it's really quite warm in here but I'll just show you here for example this is a calendula. I didn't even know these had come up. This is the flowers the calendula. Over here you've got the onions, the Elisa Craig onions. They're doing really well and then I'm sure up here I've got tomatoes somewhere yeah, they're all of them. Can you see? All three, all different types of tomatoes. All of them have germinated. This is really successful. I'm so happy. This other stuff germinating here. The broccoli has started to germinate. I've got, remember broccoli one, broccoli two. Uh, you, you remember from previous videos how I shared, how I label them and note it down. Um, what have we got here? Oh, I don't know what that is. Oh, these are dahlias. My God, they take forever to germinate, but they've started. Something is working. I'll put these on afterwards. Something is working. I don't know what else is something germinating down there. But as you can see, it's all very, very, very successful. And I'm absolutely thrilled. Oh, just wanted to show you the Welsh onion here. See, things are starting to pop out the ground. This have not popped out. This is a shrub that's just popping back out of the ground. Um, hostas are popping out. I, I divided these last year and planted them. There's some weeds I've got to take out. Over here is the Welsh onion stalk. Look at that. It, it's just, you just chop these for the onions if you get much, much bigger. This is from last year, a spinach plant. It's still there beautiful I can take the spinach and use the baby leaves in a salad if I want to another Welsh onion stalk and look at this beautiful Asa it's just a Japanese maple that my mother-in-law gave me she bought for me before she went up to Scotland and look at the colors it's beautiful and two more plants I want to show you this is a robinia it's a red robin beautiful um, plant which gives provides also cover they use them as hedges but i'm going to put it in a pot because i don't have a lot of room for it to grow so i'm going to put it in a nice big pot and then i can move it around and this one i don't know much about it's a croposma but that is going to go into a pot it's just beautiful colors um, and they're all perennials which means that they'll just look good all year round and that's more than enough for today have a great day